Hi, it's Dia. Today, I'm gonna to be using the Guanghui or Hero 168 colored pencil set and coloring in Coloring Dreams, one of my um, adult coloring books. And I'm going to leave this video in real time for a color along for anybody who wants to color along with me. Now, this was the first time I ever used the pencils and I, I was very much feeling out what I was gonna do with them. So the first color I picked here was 33. And it didn't seem bright enough for me. So then I went to 116. Now you don't have to do all this. I was just trying to fuss around. Any one of those colors would be fine. I just was kind of looking for like the perfect blue. Well, the perfect bluish purple. Uh, to go at the top of the pansy. Then I ended up using 116. And going back and forth between 116 and 104. 104 was a little deeper and possibly a little bit more purple. This was 121 and it was definitely bluer, which I didn't know if I loved or hated. And then I went to uh, kind of like a, a lighter fuchsia purple, number 57. And I really didn't like it at that point, so I left the layer, obviously, because uh, I was just coloring, but then went back to um, 121 and went right over the top of it and kept on going. Now, all that being said, what I wanted on the top two petals of the first pansy was, like I said, a deep purpley blue. And you can choose from the Hero Set 104, 116, 167, or 121. You could also probably use 33. All beautiful choices for that, for that top. And then as I was going closer to the center of the petal, I went a little bit lighter and I used 33. Also pushed a little less hard and did less layers. While I'm coloring this petal with those purple colors, I just wanted to tell you all that I read an article recently from someone who did not have nice things to say about the adult coloring craze, or coloring in general. Uh, she analyzed the past time basically as a psychotherapist and declared that people who color are trying to recapture their childhood. And she definitely stated it in a negative way. Um, Another article, because after that I started to look, I was like, really? People actually think this is bad? Because I think this is so relaxing and lovely, but I'll get to that later. Then there was another pastor in another article that I looked up, um, and more than one Christian blogger, I'm not going to say any names, they've stated that coloring, especially mandalas, ooh, let me tell you what color that is. That was 45 and I went over the perimeter over here because I just wanted to see how they were gonna take layers. So 45 around the second um, petal. And then I went back over everything with the same colors as I used in the first petal, the 121, the 167, whatever you like to choose. Anyway, back to the story. So more than one Christian blogger said that coloring, especially coloring mandalas, are not only bad, but they could be interpreted as evil and they're inappropriate to color because 
you focus too much on them and that takes your mind to a bad place. Well, I have to add my coloring two cents. I, I was thinking about it and I kind of felt like coloring is like a modern day quilting circle. And I'll tell you why. We try to improve coloring skills. Um, we try to improve our drawing skills and we reach out to others in other coloring groups, on Facebook, on Instagram, and we find other people, other like-minded colorists. And it not only helps us improve, but if we're lucky enough, sometimes we even find friends. And some people who color have a chronic illness or they're recuperating from an accident, they might be older. Um, some are incapable of doing things that they used to. Uh, and then there's a whole other faction. Others like the challenge of creating something they couldn't otherwise attempt um, if there weren't the lines down there first, or they think they couldn't. Um, and some others just think it's fun. And I personally think whatever the reason is for coloring is a good one. And I don't think we need to explain why we like to color. We just like to color and that's fine. Oop, interrupt myself here. I'm making little lines toward the center of the pansy and I I'm gonna go I'm gonna go over it with with uh, white now just to blend it all in and like I said coloring is fine so I feel like we should find coloring buddies find coloring groups and we should go to town also don't compare your coloring to anyone else's just do you so you know, find the find a group, find people to talk to about it, and find people to relate to. And we're all doing something we love. So my final thought on the subject, um, a lot of people talk about fancy supplies and fancy pencils. Um, I do the same too. I talk about, you know, pretty much everything. But don't think that you need tons of supplies or even really expensive supplies to make your coloring look gorgeous. Um, you can do it with limited palettes. In fact, I'll be doing videos in the future coloring with limited palettes. Oh, now this color is number 57 and I'm starting on the third petal just like I did with the other ones, the darkest on the outside and then lighter as it goes toward the center. I'm gonna just go back on my rant for one second. Um, my final thoughts. Um, yeah. Don't worry about having fancy fancy. You can make beautiful colors. This in, uh, I'm sorry, you can make beautiful pictures. This whole set costs $19, and some people even said that you can get it for less money. Um, it, there's, there's 168 colors, and the pictures come out beautiful. So you can make beautiful pictures with as little as literally three colors. So. Find what you like, do your thing, and don't let other influence others influence you, and just have fun. I made a little blue shadow over there. You can use any one of the colors that you had been using on the top two petals. And you really don't even have to do that now because I'll finish it later. Okay, we're back on number 57 on petal number four. And then I went one shade lighter. Well, visually one shade lighter to me and that was number 93. It's kind of a light lilac or medium lilac. It's really pretty. And now I'm also creating a bit of detail in the petals so it looks like they're more three-dimensional and less flat. I'm making some of those little lines just like I did in the top petals. And I'm going to go over the whole thing in white again. I'm going to blend it all in. I think the white not only blends it, but it lends itself to these petals to, to that nice translucency and almost reflective quality that the sun might give to a real petal. Now here's the white, and I'm just going to go over the top. 
you can see how it smooths out the the coloring lines. Now making some more details. with um, another bluish purple. Number 67. So I'm making those darker areas toward the center and I'm also doing it very lightly where I had gone over before the, with, the, with the light lilac. I'm using that fuchsia color once again to go over the edges and to go over the top to add some nice um, richness and that color is 45 this is 167 <coughs> excuse me and once again you don't have to follow exactly oh, this is a light lemony yellow Number 40. And that is 142 for some inner details. And this is a a more sunshiny yellow. This is number four. And I'm going to do that whole bottom area. And I pushed pretty hard here right away because I knew I wanted it to be intense and super yellow. Now I'm using a really rich purple. Uh, I think it is 116. This, this color has a lot of pigment and it covers really well and it's super buttery. And I'm going over a couple of the other areas first because I was almost looking for this before when I first did the top leaves, but it kind of came out nice because it's a little bit different. Now, I proceeded to make these little lines, which I almost instantly regretted, and then spent the next, hmm, I don't know, several minutes trying to smooth them out, and then made another mistake by using white. So I wouldn't do this if I were you. I would take 116 and if I was going to be doing it again, I would probably go over the top of the 116 like I'm going over with the white, but I would use 57 or 159. It'll save you a lot of trouble. Now I'm going over it with those light purple colors anyway. In this case, it's 93, which is the same lilac I used in the two petals above. And I tried to blend out those little lines. And it came out okay, but they were a little too detailed and a little too... It, it, it left it looking a little wrinkly looking versus textured. 
going over the top with 45 now, trying to blend it out again. Oh, and just so I don't forget, I am going to be giving away one of these full sets of um, Hero pencils next week, so I hope you follow me. I'm using 98 to color in that little area between the petals and just a little bit over the top to add more richness and texture. Going over again with, I think that was the 160, I'm sorry, 116. I'm adding some more lines here in an attempt to make those first lines that I did on the bottom look a little less obvious, but I think those are unnecessary too. You can add them or not. Now this center part, I started out with number 97. It's, it's a nice wine color, burgundy-ish and I wanted it to be very rich looking. So I decided right about at this point that I was gonna have to go over it. And the next one in the set that looked similar in color was 110. So I went over the top, but it ended up being very, very similar and almost didn't add depth at all. So here I am adding it. Maybe, yeah, maybe I'm, as, I'm, as I'm looking at it now, it does add a bit of richness to it and I'm adding a little more details. Maybe it was a little more pigmented. That's probably what I would say. And then I decided I would go over it again and I added brown, number 47, right here. Kind of went lightly there. And then over the top of that, 122 and then black to add a real richness. Now I'm going back in and just fussing around. I think that was 33. Add some more depth. More details to just make it look a little more realistic. I filled that area in a little bit with 33. And then I went in with one of my favorite colors in the set number 162, which is a really bright, almost like a neon yellow green. Now I added that same spring green, which is 142. And kept it just toward the center of the petals. You find that color in so many, in so many flowers. Oh, I'm going in again with those burgundy colors. And I'm just being particular. 
filling in any white spots and making certain areas appear a little darker. And over here, I think I added a little shadow so it looked like one leaf is in front of the other leaf. Okay, that's the first pansy. And so far, I really like those pencils. And then I wanted to make the second one contrast the first one. So I used number 14, which is a really nice pink. And I have to say, the color of the pencil is a little less bright than the color on the outside of the pencil. So I started with that color, and then I decided I was gonna go one brighter, and the next brighter shade was very neon, which I was really happy about, and that's number 38, which is what I'm using now. That neon yellow, the 162 and the 38 are invaluable because those are very hard, well, not even very hard, they're impossible to recreate. You can't really make them out of a pink because they're so bright and you can't really make a yellow brighter than it is either. Even if you add white, you just kind of mute it down. So I really like having these in that, in that set. So I'm leaving a little white perimeter because I'm gonna color that in later on partially. Actually, not right here, but on the bottom leaves, it's gonna be yellow. And on the top, I'm gonna to leave it white because around the back of it, there's gonna be green, so it'll help it stand out. There are many sets out there, and most sets seem to try to recreate similar colors in the basics, like the browns and the blacks and the greens, um, but you can't help but having variations, and it's really interesting to try out all the sets, or at least watch somebody else try out many sets and pick for yourself. You can, you, you can choose because some of the sets seem warmer. I have a tendency to think that the Pablos seem a little warmer, like the yellows are more, they, they, they lend themselves more to gold than neon. Um, I would say that the polychromos pinks are warmer than cool, warm versus cool. And I'm gonna be doing a review of Prismas in the not too distant future. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give my opinion on those two. You know, I do have a video where I compare three different ones and if you haven't watched that, I'll put it in the link below. I draw the, ex well, I try to draw the exact same apple three different times with three different sets of pencils. So. I will put that below. I'm using the same burgundies from the first pencil. That one is number 97. You know what, let me make sure. Nope, I'm sorry. That one's 110, the one that I put toward the center. And now I'm using the number four yellow. And I'm going right over the top of that neon pink on those two center petals. And I'm also going over the burgundy to soften it up and to blend it in a bit. In those two center petals, I want there to be like a peachy, almost cantaloupe color. But on the bottom here, I'm keeping it separate. Obviously, I didn't put any pink on those petals. I don't mind if, if that burgundy color gets blended a bit, but I want that yellow in the whole thing to be pure, so I didn't put the pink as a base first. Once again, I pushed pretty hard, just like I did in the other petal, 
but I'm going to leave that more pink. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to leave that more yellow versus the other one where I went in and I blended more and I added other colors and I, I added detail -y lines. I used much less colors. I used many fewer. I used fewer colors on this second flower. Now that's that neon color again, number 162. And you can see, even next to that yellow, it stands out so much. It almost looks like there's a black light on it. I'm just, I'm, I'm enchanted by that color. Now, I'm hopping over to the first pansy for a second because I thought that it would be nice to add some of that bright on the face of the of the two top petals. Now I'm going back and just adding the finishing touches. That's number 30, 30 something, 38 again. Going over, adding some of the details. I'm adding some pure pink behind that burgundy color, and I really like the way that ended up looking. You can never tell exactly on the video. I'm making very subtle lines here. I learned from the first one. I'm pushing a little harder with that same pink. And adding some more layers. You can add a few layers with this set, but you can't go over many, many times, just to be forewarned. Now that being said, that area right there, I had gone over lightly with one layer and then a bit with the yellow and it's still allowing me to go further. Now I'm pushing pretty hard so I probably could add a darker shade but I don't I don't know I don't I don't know if I could add like m more light details. Now I'm blending some of it with the white, just like I did on the first. Now I'm gonna do a few background leaves. This is number 88, and I went over lightly, didn't push very hard. That's a pretty kind of springy celery green. Then I moved to 142. Wanted to add a little depth to it. 
so I started to go over the top of it. You could see it a little bit, but not too much. And now for even more detail and depth, I went to 114. I'm adding some lines, little linear segments in there. And this one's showing up a bit more. I thought it would be nice to add a shadow under there. And that was number five. And I'm using the same pencil to add some details to the leaf I just colored. Oh, here's, here's a nice tip. If, if you're coloring leaves and you want to add shadows from another leaf or anything else, you don't have to use black, although I will use black later. In some of those instances, you can use a darker green, and especially a green that has some blue in it, because the blue lends itself really nicely to a shadowy effect. Now in this area, I started with the darker green, number 102 on the edges. And then I went to 114 as I went toward the center. And then I used 88, which is that same pretty celery spring green that I used first on the first leaf. Or first leafy area. Now this is just the straight black. And I decided that since the colors of the plants were so bright, that I would try the black. And that's all I'm doing here. I'm just filling in some, some background. As I spread out in the picture, which I'll be doing more videos on about... Uh, Either this week or next week, I'll be going into the blues also, so the, so the picture looks very bright and vibrant. So now I'm using the black in, in the plants uh, for shadow. And the black in this set isn't extremely pigmented. It's not bad, but it's not like super jet black, so it makes really nice shadows. And just a quickie word about shadows. If you want something to appear to be more in the foreground, you leave it lighter. So if you put a shadow behind it or next to it, it's gonna make it stand out. The thing you put in the shadows is gonna recede. I'm using that same trio of colors. The 102, 114, and 88 to make some more leaves or greenery.
Now I'm using that teal green to add some shadows in addition to the black. I'm looking for the teal green as we speak. Oh, teal green is five. And now I'm going over with black to intensify the shadows. So on this leaf, I'm first taking that bright light neon yellow green, number 162, and I'm, I'm highlighting the areas that are going to stay light. It's much easier to do that ahead of time than try to go back in in the end when something's already dark. And then after that, I went in with 114, and I'm just starting to give this leaf some detail. A lot of pictures in this book, although most are not grayscale, have tiny, tiny indicators where you, where you, not, I, I was going to say should, where you could, um, where you could change colors in the plant or you could um, indicate a shadow. Uh, It just shows where there where there might be some details and points of interest in an otherwise potentially open flat surface. So if you look really close here, you can see those little tiny dots. And the nice thing is they are kind of vague, so you can use them or not use them as guidelines. Now I'm using 142 and letting in my dog. And I am using those guidelines here somewhat because I had an idea when I was drawing it what, it, what that actual leaf would look like. And as I'm drawing what looks like a bunch of separate lines now, I am going over the darker areas and some of the lighter areas with the various colors to make the leaf look realistic. I used 142 on that little area down below.
and continuing to blend. Now I'm taking a darker green, 77, and I'm making some lines and details that I think make the leaf look realistic. I'm using 88 and going over the top of the colors and I am going to end up leaving a strip down the middle very light or almost white but there will be some lines I'm, I'm, I'm drawing those lines you can't really see them unfortunately um, but they're very light yellow very light green lines going through now I'm using darker lines and you can see like I start and stop and start and stop so as I'm drawing I pick up and put down the pencil kind of randomly because those lines would be kind of random on on the leaf that was just a little indication of um, shadow Now I'm taking 142 and kind of randomly filling in areas. I colored in some of the lighter area. I colored over some of the dark area and kind of blended in some of the lights and the darks together. This is darker. This is, no, this is uh, 65. and making some curved lines on the top so it looks like the shape, like it kind of follows the shape of, of the leaf to keep it bent looking. I'm going over randomly with 162, which is the bright neon again. And now I'm using number five. This area I'm going to keep dark because it is, in my opinion, um, an area that would be more shadowy because it's kind of underneath that tipped over part of the leaf. And I filled in those two little areas underneath too with the same color five. I'm making the area right underneath um, that tipped over part the darkest. I'm making some random lines and leaving a strip kind of in the center, not completely colored because I thought maybe a hint of light would come through. Now here's a bit of a lighter green I, 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 blend, I blended them together because even though they're darker, I still wanted to give the, the impression that it was realistic. So that's number 114. And then I'm just going to go back and forth between those two colors. I'm making more of a shadow here with five. And I'll be pulling some of that shadow down into some of those lines also to make it look a bit dimensional. Now this is almost finished and um, I left this in real time on purpose. I usually speed it up because I don't want people to get bored but I had a couple of, re of requests 
So I kept it real time so you could see all, all of the um, colors that I used. And I will put the colors below. I do like the way these um, Hero pencils colored. I, I love some of the colors. Um, I think they're pretty interesting, actually. I, I haven't used some of these colors before. Um, and if you, if you like this, oh, there's a, another color. Hold on. This one was 163. It's a, it's a very bright cantaloupe tangerine kind of color. If you like this um, real-time color along kind of video, please tell me below because I really enjoyed doing it. And if you want to see more of this, I would be, I would be happy to do it again. So here it is. Um, I hope you follow me. I am, like I said, going to give away one of these sets. You can follow me here and subscribe. Um, there's also a little bell that you can um, click on next to the subscribe button, and that will offer you all of the notifications so you don't miss a thing. So once again, tell me if you, if you like this, subscribe, and I will see you soon. I'll talk to you later. Bye.